from laptops and smartphones to ballistic missiles and space shuttles. Semiconductors power all electronic devices. The industry has seen relatively slow development in China, and it has become one of the top fields where the Chinese Communist Party has been seeking breakthroughs. For that purpose, years ago, the CCP formed its secretive strategy to gain leadership in the industry. What has it been doing? Made in China 2025 China is the biggest market for semiconductors. More than 50% of all the world's chips are sold in the country. But because of its limited domestic production capacity, China is projected to import $300 billion worth of semiconductors for three consecutive years. On top of that, it has to pay large amounts of associated patent royalties. The semiconductor industry can be vertically divided into three parts. The upstream includes the design of integrated circuits. China right now is only capable of the lower-end designs. Manufacturing would be the midstream where China relies on imported equipment and falls behind developed countries by at least 10 years. The downstream consists of testing and assembly, which are relatively less sophisticated. According to the Semiconductor Industry Association, Beijing has provided China's chipmakers with about $50 billion in subsidies over the past 20 years. In 2014, the CCP invested about $100 billion to fund chip development. It supported Fujian Jinhua Integrated Circuit, Inatron Memory, and Tsinghua Unigroup's Yangtze Memory Technologies Company, with developing Dynamic Random Access Memory, or DRAM, a critical product among commercial chips. About a year later, it announced the Made in China 2025 plan and set the goal of meeting 40% of domestic semiconductor needs by 2020 and 70% by 2025. But as of 2019, domestic productions only fulfilled 16% of chips used by China. This explains why the CCP decided to adopt a more secretive strategy. In other words, it wants to take shortcuts. Recruiting and Theft In 2016, the state-backed Fujian Jinhua Integrated Circuit Company, or JHICC, entered into a partnership with Taiwanese chipmaker United Microelectronics Corps, or UMC. JHICC agreed to provide $700 million to fund equipment and research for developing a manufacturing process for making DRAM chips. If things went according to the plan, JHICC would be able to mass-produce 12 nanometer chips. That same month, UMC opened a new business development center in Tainan, a city in southern Taiwan, dedicated to creating the manufacturing process for JHICC. The head of the center was Stephen Chen, a former president of Micron Memory Taiwan, or MMT, America's largest memory chip manufacturer, Micron Technology Incorporated's Taiwanese subsidiary. Chen joined UMC in 2015 and recruited many former MMT employees, including J.T. Ho and Kenny Wang. Taiwan's prosecutors found that Ho and Wang downloaded Micron's trade secrets for manufacturing DRAM chips onto their personal flash drives before joining UMC. They later transferred the trade secrets to UMC computers. Rong Lei Tien, Ho and Wang's supervisor at UMC, asked Ho to use MMT trade secrets to perfect UMC's development of the DRAM manufacturing process to save time and costs. The Micron trade secrets that Wang stole proved invaluable to UMC's development effort and critical to the timeline of the Jinhua DRAM project, Micron said in its filing. In February 2017, Stephen Chen took the president position at JHICC. In November 2018, UMC, JHICC, Ho, Wang, and Chen were indicted by the U.S. federal prosecutors for conspiring to steal trade secrets from Micron. Just before the U.S. indictment, the Department of Commerce also enacted an export ban against JHICC. When this happened, JHICC just received some American equipment and was in the middle of installation and testing. As soon as the ban was announced, the involved U.S. equipment, parts, and software providers stopped providing technical support. UMC then also stopped the collaboration. Because it was unable to operate the purchased equipment, JHICC is planning to sell its plant. The shortcut has become a dead end. But the troubles didn't end there for UMC. On June 12, 2020, the district court in Taiwan's Taichung City sentenced the three UMC employees to between four and a half to six and a half years in prison. It also found UMC guilty of violating Taiwanese law on trade secrets and fined UMC about $3.4 million. 
On June 24, a federal judge in San Francisco issued warrants against Stephen Chen, J.T. Ho, and Kenny Wang. On October 28, UMC pled guilty to U.S. charges of trade secret theft. It was fined $60 million. It was the second time the company was fined. Another case involved Tsinghua Unigroup, a state-controlled chipmaker who was the first to receive support from the CCP's chip fund. In 2016, it hired five senior engineers and managers from Inatera. The engineers provided Tsinghua Unigroup with Inatera's trade secrets. They were rewarded with monthly salaries of 200,000 new Taiwan dollars, three times what they were paid at Inatera. In September the same year, they were indicted for trade espionage. China's largest chipmaker. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or SMIC, is the largest and most advanced integrated circuit manufacturer in mainland China. Its rise has also been relying on technology theft. In the year 2000, SMIC was founded in Shanghai by Richard Chang, known as the father of the Chinese semiconductor. In 2003, TSMC sued SMIC for trade secret theft and patent infringement that stemmed from chip sales in California. The case was settled in 2005. SMIC agreed to pay $175 million, but the documents were not returned. And in its patent applications, SMIC revealed some of TSMC's trade secrets. The actions led to another lawsuit in 2006. The two companies settled the case in 2009. SMIC would pay TSMC $200 million and an undisclosed amount of stock and warrants. Shortly after that, Chang resigned from the CEO position at SMIC. In late September, the U.S. government sanctioned SMIC. It would cut off China's biggest chipmaker from crucial U.S. software and chipmaking equipment. This will likely put constraints on the company's future growth. The U.S. government is aware of the risk of American exports being used by the CCP's military. In fact, Daytang Telecom, both one of SMIC's largest shareholder and customer, provides optical fiber and microwave communication equipment for the Chinese military. This means SMIC also serves the People's Liberation Army. These were among the many incidences where mainland China companies committed technology thefts against Taiwan. According to official data, there were 21 such cases in the year 2017. The recruiting companies in mainland China often offered 2 to 2.5 times the average salaries and bonuses paid in Taiwan. The CCP's primary targets for talent poaching have been locations with high concentrations of Taiwan's industry talents, such as Sin Shu. Those places are also centers of intellectual property theft, which often follows recruitment. Overall, more than 3,000 engineers, or nearly 10% of Taiwan's semiconductor research and development workforce, are estimated to have transferred from Taiwan to mainland companies. Expensive Acquisitions Another strategy has been directly acquiring foreign companies. Market research firm Rhodium Group estimated that Chinese companies made about $34 billion in offers to acquire U.S. semiconductor companies between 2015 and 2017 but only $4.4 billion worth of deals was completed. Some bids were so overvalued that U.S. officials joked that the Chinese buyers were willing to pay an espionage premium. As an example, after a Chinese firm failed to buy a semiconductor material arm of Royal Phillips NV, Phillips sold the unit to a U.S. private equity firm for about half the previous price. In September 2015, a subsidiary of Unisplendor Corp. under Tsinghua Unigroup agreed to buy 15% of Western Digital, an American computer hard disk drive manufacturer and data storage company, for $3.78 billion. This deal fell through after the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. informed the parties that it would investigate the transaction. Countries like South Korea, Japan, and Germany also took measures to block similar transactions. But it seems the CCP has other ways to get what it wants. Since 2010, there have been 650 Chinese investments in Europe. Some of them are in high-tech industries. Rhodium Group found that during the same period, 56% of the $188 billion Chinese direct investments into the EU came from state companies. For instance, Dutch consulting firm Daytenna's CEO, Jap Van Etten, mentioned the acquisition by a Shanghai-listed Suzhou Jingfang Semiconductor Technology Company subsidiary, also known as China Wafer Level CSP Company. In 2019, 
the company bought 73% of the Netherlands and Terion Optical Solutions, a spin-off of Philip Electronics that makes digital equipment for robotics and cameras for 32 million euros. Daytena found that the buyer was controlled through several layers of interlinked shareholders who were ultimately in the state entity's hands. As USCC member Michael R. Wessel commented, China's engaged in a buying spree of international semiconductor firms. What they can't develop on their own, they intend to buy, if they can, or steal, if they must. The race has started. It seems China has a long way to go before achieving dominance in the semiconductor sector, but the CCP is determined to do so. The party came up with a plan to surpass the U.S. in technologies. Its general secretary, Xi Jinping, promised to invest $1.4 trillion in industries from wireless networks to artificial intelligence over six years to 2025. Semiconductors, which will be needed in all those industries, will likely receive additional financial support. So will the CCP's wish come true and win the chip war against the United States? Leave your comments below and we'll further discuss this topic in future videos. Thank you for watching Unseen Fortunes. If you enjoyed our content, please click like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.